Kobe Bryant was one of the best basketball players of all time. He earned more money every single year. He progressed his basketball career fast. He was in total control of his career no matter what happened on the outside. He was able to influence and impact every single game that he played because he was one of the best and he loved what he did. He woke up excited every single day. So I want these five goals for you guys. So in this video, we're gonna learn 10 lessons from Michael Jordan that we can apply to our own careers in the construction industry and get to greatness ourselves. Let's go. So lesson number one from Kobe Bryant, learn from greatness. Kobe Bryant loved Michael Jordan. He followed everything he did from his training to watching his videos to watching his games and he wanted to do everything that Michael Jordan did, okay? He used to also watch Magic Johnson and he thought, can I get to that level? And he said, let's find out. I'd watch Michael play and I would see them do these unbelievable things and I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but Let's find out. That's why he's the best player in the game. So what I want from you guys is to pick one or two or even three people that you admire, someone like uh, Michael Jordan for you guys and I want you to think about why they are so good and what they are doing that's different to you and I want you to try copy and imitate them as much as possible just like Kobe Bryant did with Michael Jordan. I also did this in my career as well. I found a few people who I really, really admired and I learned as much from them as I possibly could. I went out for a coffee and for lunch and asked them questions and got to know them a bit more. One of them was a girl called Tina and she won loads of internal awards at Balfour Beatty and she also won the Women, of Engineering Construct Women in Construction Engineering Awards too. She was unbelievable in her career. And another person I learned from was someone called Ines and she also won the Women of Engineering Construction Awards too. And I worked with Ines for two years and I tried to learn as much as I could from her to apply it to my own career as well and I want you guys to do the same thing. Um, have you heard of a TV program called Heroes and there's a villain in Heroes called Sila and what Sila does is he's got this superpower and he could absorb all of other people's superpower as well so that's what, how I want you to think about your career too. I want you to absorb all of these powers from the people around you because there are some super smart people around you and I want you to absorb their powers and I want you to get better and better and better. Lesson number two from Kobe Bryant, get better every single day. So I want you to strive for improvement, continuous improvement, develop your knowledge, develop your skills, develop your character traits as well, okay? And this is gonna be really simple, but I just want you to write down one single improvement that you can do every single day. At the end of the day, just write down one thing that you could have done better in your day, okay? And at the end of the month, you're gonna have 20 different uh, lists or 20 different items for you to improve on. And then you can start to see patterns and say, oh, this came up again and this came up again this came up again then you can start to address those and then you can get better every single day so things could be like maybe you're on your phone too much that day and you use your phone and you got distracted now you don't want to do that you want it to focus better at your work maybe you walked went into a meeting and you didn't listen enough or you didn't take enough notes and you forgot what some of the actions in the meeting were and you're like what what happened in that meeting what did i do what do i need to take away from that meeting or maybe even you sent some work to your manager and he looked at it and he said, oh, he found a mistake. So he came back to you and he said, can you please look at this again? Because you, there's a mistake. So you wanna try to find a way to make sure that mistake doesn't happen. Maybe check your work twice. Those are a few different improvements, okay? And at the end of the day, just make a note of that one thing. And then at the end of the month, you have 20 improvements to make. And then as you go along, you can fix these improvements and you can get better every single day, right? So I've got this system that I've used myself in my career to get better every single day because I also started making loads of mistakes, didn't do things right. And then over time, I fixed my errors and fixed my mistakes by doing the same thing I'm telling you guys and I got better. And this is a system that I created for myself and that I also want uh, I also have created for you guys too. So you can see here, this is a daily review. I used to rate myself every single day. And if I click open this one, I can get down to the bottom of this and I can see improvements down here. And that's where I wrote down one improvement at the end of there. And you can see there's a, a space for four or five different improvements. So if you've got more than one, you can put them all down and then you can get better and better and better. 
Lesson number three from Kobe Bryant, prove them wrong. Okay, there is someone that you know right now, you're like, that guy's an idiot, I don't like him. Or you know, might, you might wanna prove someone who said that you're not good enough. Or you might wanna prove yourself wrong, that you can achieve things that maybe you could not think about achieving before, okay? So what I did in my career is I had the same thing. I had one teacher when I was younger who said, you're never gonna to amount to anything in your life and in your career. And I was like, I'm gonna prove that person wrong. And I also wanted to prove myself wrong as well. And I I reached commercial lead in five years because I put the effort and time and energy in to get better and better and better. I also co-founded a young professionals group. I worked with the CEO of, of a global construction company directly just one-on-one -on -one with him on his leadership program. So I improved so much and I don't think I would have been as good if I didn't have something to prove either to myself or to other people. And one of my other friends, he reached commercial director in nine years as well. And we were at university at the same time and we didn't do as well as some of the other people, but we still progressed arguably better than other people who we graduated with. Number four, work on your weaknesses. So this is really important. Kobe Bryant said to work on his weaknesses in this interview. So have a look. I mean, every day, I mean, since you know, for 20 years, I mean, it was an everyday process in trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses. For example, jumping ability. Man, my vertical was a 40, it wasn't a 46 or a mm -hmm. 40, 45. Um, my hands are big, but they're not massive. Right? So you got to figure out ways to strengthen them so your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast. Right? So I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. And, uh, but I enjoyed it though. So, like so in my own career, my productivity sucked and I wasn't very good at, but I just wasn't getting much done in a day. So I had to figure out what could I do to get better at productivity so I can get more work done and more high quality work done. So I read loads of books, I took courses and I developed the system for myself that I've got for you guys in my program as well. Um, and I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't had a growth mindset. So there's something between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So I knew that my productivity sucked, okay? And if I had a fixed mindset, I would say, I'm just like that. I can't get productive, this is just who I am. Doesn't matter what I do, I'm just never gonna be productive. I'm gonna stay as I am. That's a fixed mindset. A growth mindset says, okay, I'm not good at productivity. What can I do to get better? If I invest time and energy into it, I can get better and better. And that's what I did. I read books, articles, watched YouTube videos, Videos, developed a system for myself, bought courses, I actually trained myself on productivity and I got better and better and better over time. Another one that I wasn't good at is knowledge. I didn't have as much knowledge as some of the people that I admired in my company and I also couldn't articulate that knowledge very well. When I was in meetings I couldn't really express it very well, I couldn't really talk very well, I couldn't communicate as well as I wanted to so I took the RICS and the RICS boosted my communication and it boosted my knowledge and it gave me the skills that I needed to express myself in meetings or to my manager or, or to communicate better with other people, right? Um, I also didn't understand things like tax very well, so I went on a tax course. I didn't understand planning and programming very well, so I went on a planning and programming course to develop my knowledge and skills. I'm also APMP qualified, so I wanted to get better at project management as well. So you can see all of these little things were my weaknesses, and I identified them, and I said, okay, I don't want these weaknesses. I, what can I do to improve and get better at these weaknesses? And then I put in the time and effort and the energy, and voila, I got better over time. So I want you guys to do the same thing in your career too. Uh, and quick one, we've got a um, free program called Construction Labs, okay, and you can join that for free right now for 90 days. Uh, if you want to go straight into a paid program that we have, we've got one called Construction Pro, and that is going to take you in 30 days to become a highly valuable, high-earning construction pro. You'll become a game changer. There are three pillars that have created this program. The first pillar is my own experience. I've been in the industry for 10 years. I've documented my process. I've analyzed the top construction professionals in the industry. I've interviewed them, asked them questions, and I've taken detailed notes on the processes, so I now understand what it took to get to the top. The second pillar is uh, top 1% experts that have helped me to create this platform. I had meetings with them, pictures with them, I went to the house, and I showcased it, I met with them, and we went through all of the stuff to make it better and better and better to help you guys as well. And I asked them questions on what they did in their career that we that they can also help me to help you guys. And then the third pillar was the research that I've done for this program. So I spent over 100,000 pounds on research. Yes, that's absolutely insane. I read loads of books, articles, podcasts, YouTube videos. So all of this is basically experts outside of the construction industry. So the three pillars were my internal experience, 
the experts from inside the construction industry and also experts from outside the construction industry. These are like top 1% people in the entire world that I've learned from and I've combined everything into this one product for you guys as well and that's the paid program. So you've got two options, the free one you can join which is called Construction Labs and the paid one which is called Construction Pro. Right. Lesson number five from Kobe Bryant, execute what you practice. So what Kobe Bryant did was he used to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning to practice his weaknesses and also practice his free throws and other training bits that he needed to do. So when it came to game time, when it came to the actual matches, he was prepared and he was so, so good. Okay, footballers do the same thing. They train and then they have the matches. But in our career, we forget that we can do the same thing. We can also train and then when we go to work, which, we, which is eight or nine hours every single day, we can see that as our performance, as our match, right? So we wanna do some training outside of work or even before work or even after work finishes so that we can actually train the knowledge and the skills that we need to, okay? Then when we get to work, we can perform just like these guys, but we never think of it like that. Think of, uh, let me give you an example, okay? So you've got two different types of people, one person, who knows X, Microsoft Excel really, really well, okay? And he learned Microsoft Excel in his time outside of work. So he took a course, he learned from other people outside of his time at work. Then when he got to work, he used Microsoft Excel every day and he was so good at it, he, so good at it. He was so proficient at it. His productivity improved. He was able to get work done faster. And then you've got person number two who was not very good at, um, at Microsoft Excel, but he didn't take courses outside or he didn't learn outside and he just stayed exactly as he was with Microsoft Excel. And you can see the two vast differences between these two in their mindsets and their attitudes and also where they ended up in their career as well. Person one ended up really high. Person two who didn't want to learn the Excel course didn't progress that fast. He wasn't as good at his job as person one. One more thing to mention on this is, uh, and, and I advise you to do this, is to fill in the gaps of your knowledge. So this is one method which is really, really effective and a lot of my members inside my program are loving this method and it's filling in the gaps of your knowledge. So if you go to a meeting, okay, and you don't understand something that your manager is saying, maybe they're talking about parent company guarantees and you're like, I'm not quite sure what they're talking about or, or there's little bits that you're a bit confused on. What I want you to do is make a note of some of these topics that you don't understand and then I want you to research and fill in the gaps of your knowledge, all right? So we've got ChatGPT and we've also got Google as well. We can research it and we can fill in the gaps of our knowledge. And then maybe your colleagues are talking about something that you don't understand. But, and, and now you're like, okay, I need to fill in the gaps of this knowledge. They're talking about construction material or technology. And you're like, I don't know that. I want you to research it and fill in the gaps of your knowledge. As you're doing that progressively, as you're progressing in your career, that means if you're in year five, you don't have the same gaps as you had in year one because you filled in all the gaps of your knowledge. So you're actually progressing your knowledge and knowledge compounds it actually grows and grows and grows and grows. So that's a really effective technique for you guys. And that's another way of saying execute what you've practiced. So when it comes to performance day, when you're working, you get better and better. Lesson number six, learn from wins and losses. So Kobe used to study his game tapes, his own game tapes after matches, right? So he used to watch the whole game back and make notes of what he was good at, what he was bad at, what he did right, what he did wrong. So he used to learn from his wins and losses, right? And I'll give you a few other examples of this where you can apply in your career, maybe in your life. Let's say for an example that your parents have not had a very good relationship, okay? So you can also learn the wins from that and also the losses from that, right? Right? So you can see your parents' relationship and say, they're doing good in this and they're, they're doing pretty bad in this. So in your own life, in your own relationship, if you have a partner, you can also say, I'm gonna take this good and I'm not gonna take this bad from them, right? And then that's how you get better. You learn from your wins and the losses as well. And another thing is if you're in projects at the moment, right? Sometimes you might've been on projects which are doing really bad. Sometimes you're in projects that are doing really well, right? And that's also wins and losses. So I want you to see the project that's done really, really well and say, what are the wins from that project? And I want you to document document your process. And this is what I call the playbook. And I believe it's the 21, 21st century superpower of a construction professional. Because if you've got all the moves of successful projects, okay, you've got the blueprint almost, you've got a list of 50, 60, 70 different items of what makes a project successful. And you walk into a new project with this, you can literally fix and solve and find problems of the new project that you're on. And you can then become the hero of your project, okay? If, for example, you've worked on a really bad project as well, right? A project that that didn't do that well, 
then you can also learn from that as well, which means you're learning from your losses. And we had a problem on the contract on one of my projects and it was bad and it cost us a lot of money. And I wrote down exactly what went wrong and I documented that process so that next time I went to a project, I made sure that did not happen again. I didn't wanna rely on my own brain for this. And the APR system that we've built for you guys, if you join Construction Pro, has this inbuilt inside of it. So you actually don't need to do anything. You just write down one or two or three things that you've done and it will automatically collate that list for you. It's so, so powerful. So by the end of the year, you've got literally 50 things, um, a list of 50 things that make a project successful. That's just game changing. Lesson number seven from Kobe Bryant, be ambitious, okay? I believe we are starved of ambition. There are people that don't wanna progress, that don't wanna learn, and it's the best feeling when you get better and when you put in the time and energy, okay? I'm gonna tell you a difference between something called entitlement and something called ambitious. So entitlement is when you expect others to close the gap between what you have and what you want. Okay, ambition is when you expect yourself to close the gap between what you have and what you want, okay? So entitlement is when you've got gaps, so you're down here and you've got, you want to be up here, okay? You want to develop your knowledge and your skills and you wanna be up here and you've got this gap. If you're entitled, you're expecting other people, maybe your manager, maybe your company, to fill in those gaps for you. You're waiting, you're literally waiting for someone to come to you and say, Hilan, make sure you learn about this topic and this topic because I saw that in the meeting, you were not very good at that. So make sure you learn it. You want someone to come to you and tell you what you need to do. You want your company to drop you an email and say, you are gonna go on this training because it's gonna help you, right? That's entitlement. You're waiting for someone else to help you. Whereas ambitious means that you yourself are closing the gap between where you are and where you want to be. So an entitled person and an ambitious person both have the same gaps, but an entitled person just waits for someone else to close the gaps. An ambitious person closes the gaps themselves. They're like, okay, I'm not good at this, this, and this. I'm gonna go out and get the knowledge and skills to fill in that gap. You're doing it yourself. You're not waiting for anyone. You are proactive, okay? And um, I was very entitled in the beginning until I learned all of these things that I'm telling you guys as well. I waited for so long for my manager to tell me what to do, for my company to put me on the training, right? And only until I realized that I have to take full responsibility for my own entire career and that no one is gonna come to help me and no one is gonna come to save me, that's when I woke up and said, okay, I better get those knowledge and skills myself because no one is coming to help or save me, right? I um, worked with someone called James in the construction industry and he was exceptional. He used to tell me that he's gonna make commercial director all the time. Time. And he actually, I think he reached senior commercial manager or he's there right now. So he will, I do believe he will get to commercial director in a short space of time. And he's actually very ambitious because he's closing the gap between where he is and where he wants to be. He's doing the work. He's putting in the time, effort, the energy. And that is the definition of ambition. Kobe Bryant, lesson number eight, believe in yourself. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a little loop. There's four, four actions. If you believe that you can reach, let's say you're a quantity set, if you believe that you can reach commercial manager, this is what's gonna happen. So number one, you believe you can reach commercial manager. Number two is you then tap into your potential because you believe it. You actually believe that you can reach commercial manager. So number two, you tap into your potential. Number three, then you start to take action. Then you start to do a lot of the things that I'm telling you in these videos, right? You start to take action on them. You start to fill in the gaps of your knowledge. You start to write down that one improvement at the end of the day so that you can get better. And then fourth is you start to get results and it's that continuous loop. When you start to get results, then you believe in yourself even more. Then you tap into your potential even more. Then you um, take more action and then you get even more results. And that's where the loop starts going round and round. Let's say if it's the opposite, let's say you don't believe in yourself, okay? Then if you don't believe in yourself, you can't tap into your potential, right? And you can't tap into your potential, which means you don't take action, right? So at the moment, if you're thinking you know, you're not taking action, it's because you don't believe you you can actually reach commercial manager. So you're not taking action, which means you're not getting the results that you want. And then you're not getting the results that you want, then you're not believing in yourself. And then that loop goes round and round and round. So you need to make sure that you're on the right loop here, okay? The other thing that I always say is to outwork your self-doubt. It's, it's a phrase that I have in my head all the time. We are always doubtful about things inside of our career, okay? Maybe you're not good at something and you've got some weaknesses, right? Maybe you're doubtful, like you go into a meeting and your manager asks you a question and you you don't know the answer, you're a bit doubtful. I want you to put the effort and the energy to outwork that self-doubt and you turn that doubt into confidence, right? And I want you to go to certainty and then absolute certainty where you walk in and you're like, I know what I'm doing, 
I've got the results, I've got the knowledge, I believe I can do it. And you actually go into that meeting and you boss it and everyone's like, wow, he is so good at what he does. Kobe Bryant, lesson number nine, be obsessed. Right, Kobe Bryant was obsessed. And I want you to develop a passion and obsession for your craft, for your company. There are two types of people, people in the construction industry. There are people who are interested in what they do and there are people who are committed. There's a big, big difference between both of these two types of people. I want you to be committed to your career, which means you're cutting off all different options, right? Imagine if you're dating a girl, right? And you don't commit to her and you don't get married. That means you're gonna continue dating and dating and dating and dating and dating. What I want you to do is get married to your career. Yes, I'm saying that, get married to your career, commit one wife for the rest of your life <laughs> and one career for the rest of your life if you so choose that to be. But I want you to commit to that career, okay? There's something called, um, I'm gonna give you a scale here. On the left side, you've got a job. In the middle, you've got a career. And on the right, you've got mastery. I want you to move from a job where that's interesting all the way to a all the way to mastery where you are fully, fully committed. A job is something where you you have to go to work, right? You don't want to go to work, you have to go to work for the money. A career is where you professionally develop and you scale and you get better and better because you want to get better. And mastery is where you develop Mas it's, it's a <laughs> mastery is where you develop mastery in your career and where then you are fully, fully committed and you are more obsessed rather than just being interested in your career. There's big, big differences. So here's a quick example on this. Three quantity spheres are asked, what are you doing? The first says, I am measuring materials. The second says, I'm managing construction costs. The third says, I am ensuring the value and efficiency of our built environment. The first quantity sphere has a job, the second has a career, and the third has mastery. All of us want to be the third, but most identify with the first or the second. So now you've seen you wanna to get to mastery. Kobe Bryant, lesson number 10, final lesson. Have mentors and seek knowledge. If you want to shortcut your career path, you learn from the people ahead of you. Why would you make the same mistakes as other people? Why would you try reinvent the wheel when the wheel is already created? There's three levels of intelligence. Level one of intelligence is where you learn just from your own self, okay? And you learn from you don't learn from your mistakes. So you make loads of mistakes yourself, but you don't learn from them. Number two is where you make mistakes yourself and you learn from the mistakes. Number three is where you learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to make them yourself. If there's any shortcut that I have in my own career and any advice I would give you guys in your career too, if you want a shortcut, get to your ideal income faster, progress your career faster, be influential, be impactful faster, learn from people ahead of you, okay? There are people out there, mentors or even courses, where you can learn from to shortcut that career path and get you to exactly where you want to get to much faster. Michael Jordan, sorry, Kobe Bryant did the same thing and I want you guys to do the same thing in your entire career too. So here we've learned 10 lessons from Kobe Bryant where you can apply to your own career too. Let's get to work and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.